He was magical. He was perfect. This is what Hall of Fame catcher Johnny Bench said about Willie Mays to mark his 90th birthday on May 6, 2021. But what have you said about Mays? A legend? An icon? Overrated? Underrated? Well, whatever it is, gather here because the baseball world is uniting for Willie Mays. We'll explore what people have said about Willie Mays and his impact on baseball and beyond. First off, he hit 660 homers, but the truth is, he would have had more if military service had not taken out two years from his playing career. And if you also consider that he had played in Candlestick Park, which is notorious for its unfriendly wins, maybe he could have hit up to eight to 900 homers. Or wouldn't you agree? Well, Pete Rose certainly did when he said, I felt sorry for Willie in a way having to play at that S-hole candlestick. That was the worst place in the world to play baseball. It was always windy and cold. The sun was always in your eyes. There were 10,000, 12,000 people at every game. If he played today in the band boxes in Cincinnati, in Philadelphia, and some other places, he'd hit 70 homers a year. He wasn't just a power hitter, he was a good hitter. He loved to talk hitting. If he had hit behind me and Joe Morgan, he'd have driven in 500 or 600 more runs. But Rose wasn't the only one saying it. Assistant Commissioner of Baseball Joe Torrey also agreed. The ballparks he played in didn't aid him. He hit 660 home runs, but he had to earn every one of them at home. The polo grounds were short down the lines, but in the gap, they were very deep. And he played at Candlestick. Afternoon, the ball would fly to right field, but you could shoot a bazooka off in left field some of those nights, and the ball wouldn't go anywhere. Well, Candlestick has been long demolished, and the San Francisco Giants have moved to Oracle Park since 2000. Who knows how different May's hitting would have been here. But Willie wasn't just an exceptional hitter, there was something about his gloves. His hand. Something magical, or otherworldly, if you will. But it was what made him a fielding god, a defensive maestro. And what did he earn for his efforts? So much. The first time the Gold Glove Awards were given in 1957, Willie Mays was one of the first players to get it. And do you know that from that year until 1968, he won one each year, which made it 12 consecutive Gold Glove Awards for him. Now just imagine how many he would have won if the awards had been established before he came to the league. To give you a better perspective, Mays was already dominating the MLB and had won Rookie of the Year in 1951, so you do the math. Nevertheless, one of the most notable things he did as a catcher was the incredible over-the-shoulder catch that robbed the Yankees' Vic Wirtz of a potential extra base hit. MLB has called that particular play the catch. Felipe Alou, who had over 2,000 hits, had seen the catch and other incredible saves Mays made, and this was why he said, I found myself at times watching the game like a fan would watch a game. A ball would be hit, and I would say, like a fan or a broadcaster, is he really going to catch this one? He had an amazing first step. He was covering half the field by himself. Additionally, two-time World Series champion and Hall of Famer Tommy Perez had said, The best play I ever saw him make was the hit that Veda Pinson hit to right center field at Candlestick. Willie ran the ball down, collided with right fielder Bobby Bonds, and caught the ball. I don't know how Willie caught it. Then another Hall of Famer, Reggie Jackson, said, I have the last glove that Willie Mays wore. It says 1954 World Champions on it. I bought it. For how much? Let's just say if I sold it, it would have taken $200,000 to $250,000. I bought it because no one used a glove better than Willie Mays. But aside from catching, the Say Hey Kid could also throw the ball. No wonder Orlando Cepeda picked him over Roberto Clemente. Cepeda, or the Baby Bull as he was popularly called, had said of Mays, Ave Maria. I never saw anyone go from first to third on Willie's arm. Felipe Alou was a great right fielder, but Willie once told Felipe on a fly ball hit by Willie Kirkland to right center, let me take it, let me take it. So Willie caught the ball at the 390-foot sign in right center field and he threw a low throw on the line in the air all the way to third base. Willie had the greatest throwing arm ever seen, even better than Roberto Clemente's arm. But May's arms 
weren't the only things doing magic on the field. His legs could have gotten him a medal on the tracks as well. The Say Hey Kid could run, really run. We're going to have to call in Toby Perez again for this one, and this is what he had to say about Mays. He was one of the greatest. He would go from first base to third on a ball to right center. He didn't even have to look at the third base coach. He was his own coach. Felipe Alou also had something to say. I was always told that Jackie Robinson was the only base runner better than Willie, but I used to wonder, how can you be a better runner than Willie Mays? I saw him score standing up at least 10 times on a wild pitch that wasn't 10 feet from home plate. Willie McCovey, who was his teammate for some time, also said of Mays, Willie would start to run to second on the wild pitch or a pass ball, then go back to first because he knew they'd walk me with first base open. Oh, Willie saw it all. Mays also did it all. His legacy has been celebrated in a number of ways over the years. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1979, and his number 24 has been retired by both the Giants and the New York Mets. In 2000, the Giants unveiled a statue of Mays outside their ballpark. And in 2020, he was named to Major League Baseball's all-time team, a collection of the greatest players in history. He's the center fielder in the list with Babe Ruth and Ted Williams as the right and left fielders, respectively. Another Baseball Hall of Famer and legend, Ken Griffey Jr., who won 10 Gold Glove Awards, recognized him as the best center fielder when he said, I call him the godfather of center fielders. Then Lon Simmons, Hall of Fame broadcaster who called most of May's play as a play-by-play -play announcer of the Giants once said, Willie was so good the fans expected a miracle from him every day, so he gave them a miracle every other day. A miracle many of us who weren't born and wish we had seen. Luckily for sports legends like Juan Marichal and Bob Costas, they were there for the show. The Dominican Dandy Marichal had said, Willie was the best, number one all time, and I know I was there for a lot of Willie. While legendary sportscaster Bob Costas had said, you had to have seen Mays to appreciate him. You had to see how electric it was when he walked from on-deck circle to the plate, how he made even the routine play seem so stylish and distinctive, how he loped into the dugout at the end of the inning, how his hat would fly off on the base paths. He was so magnetic. The stats support it. They don't tell the whole story. Finally, May's skills on the field were matched by his infectious personality and leadership qualities. He was known for his positivity, his work ethic, and his ability to inspire his teammates. But his impact on the game of baseball went beyond his individual achievements and leadership on the field. He was also a trailblazer for African-American players in the major leagues. He broke down barriers and paved the way for future generations of players, even though Jackie Robinson criticized him for his lack of voice. But in the early 1950s, when Mays was starting his career, segregation was still rampant in the United States. Many of the minor league teams that African-American players were forced to play on were poorly funded and poorly run. The players were subjected to racial slurs, and discrimination from fans and opposing players. But Mays faced these challenges head on, and he quickly proved himself to be a force to be reckoned with on the field. His impact continues on till this day. And one of the beneficiaries of racial inclusion is Tony Clark, who is the first black executive director of MLB Players Association. Clark also had something to say about Mays, quote, There was a steady climb for us, and it was literally on the backs of players like Willie. I'm grateful and thankful for him. I obviously didn't accomplish half of what he did as a player, but he and the others helped pay for myself and other black ball players to play the game we love. If you enjoyed this video about Baseball World Unites for Willie Mays, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.